is Sue Ann Curry. Your speech title, Whatever You're Selling, I'm Buying. What defines a salesperson, a real estate agent, someone trying to talk you into a buyer's protection plan when you buy a washing machine, or someone strategically implanting a 100 implanting a $100,000 hardware and software solution to help your company run more e efficiently. Each of these are salespeople. But did you know that you're a salesperson when you try to get your kids to eat their Brussels sprouts? Or when you try to convince your friends to go to a documentary instead to the latest Tom Cruise flick? Or when you pop the question? John Henry, this speech would have come in handy when you were proposing to your mother. <laughs> Regardless of what you're selling, it's important to understand the qualities of a successful salesperson and how to create sales strategy. Today, Sue Ann Kern, with the assistance of Jillian, will share with us what it takes to be a successful salesperson in Project One of the Persuasive Speaking Manual, The Effective Salesperson. The project involves multiple parts. The first part, Sue Ann will present a three to four minute speech sharing the importance of good conversation, a good conversation skills and techniques to help you with the process. In the second part, Sue Ann and Jillian will role play an unrehearsed sales situation for three to four minutes. And for the third part, there will be a two to three minute discussion period about the conversation in which all are welcome to participate. <coughs> Regardless of what you're selling, you will benefit from these tools, and soon, all of your customers will say, whatever you're selling, I'm buying. <laughs> welcome to <laughs> One image comes to mind when I say the word salesperson. Some plaid, laser plaid gym at the used car dealership saying, it's a deal of the century. <laughs> or what about that faceless voice on the other end of the phone at dinner time? Is a lady of the house there? And who remembers Jordan for vacuum cleaner and stuff to give you a salesman. I'm surprised we buy anything at all. But truth be told, every one of us needs to be a salesperson from time to time just to get by. We are a salesperson when we apply for a job, when we go to the bank for a loan, or when we try to get our spouse to go to the restaurant we want to go to. You may have heard the phrase, she's so good she could sell ice to an Eskimo. That's actually a pretty good analogy. You have to know everything there is to know about that block of ice, and you have to convince that Eskimo that they want it, that they need it, and they are willing to spend their hard-earned cash on it. So how do you develop a strategy to sell, regardless of what you're selling? First of all, you have to develop a rapport. You have to find a common ground between you and the buyer and create a comfortable and easy conversation with them so that they can start developing trust with you and like you. Then, you have to uncover the buyer's needs. Sometimes the buyer doesn't even know that they need something. They just know that whatever you're selling looks pretty interesting or that there's just something missing. They've got some, some undescribed, unmet need and it's your job to find that. You have to listen, you have to ask questions, you have to ask more questions, and you have to listen some more. You can ask discovery questions such as, what do you do? How do you do it? When and where do you do it? With whom and with what do you do it? And what kind of problems are you having? How would it be better? How would you like to see it improved? The first two questions help you to discover the current situation. The second two questions help you determine whether or not you have a product that will actually fit their needs. And the final two questions help you help the buyer realize that they've got a need that you can help them meet. So listen and practice those excellent communication skills. Now comes the part 
where you have to show your honesty, your credibility, your knowledge. You have to know your product. You have to know the market. You have to know your competitors. This is when you get to explain the details of your product and keep asking questions, keep listening. Pretty soon, you're going to start noticing some signals from the buyer. Maybe they're interested or not. A nod of the head. A smile or a grimace. Maybe a comment like, oh, that, that might do. Or, oh, I'm not so sure. If you get a negative feel, then it's time to ask more questions. It's time to restart the discovery. Because maybe you jumped to a conclusion too quickly, or maybe you misunderstood. If you get a positive response, then it's time to ask for the sale. Let me repeat. Ask for the sale. Because if that buyer walks out the door and you haven't asked for the sale, all of your hard work may be for naught. So, ask them if they want to sign up. Ask them if they'd like to purchase the product. Ask them if they would like to make an appointment. And pretty soon, you're going to get that sale. You can shake their hand, say thank you, smile graciously, and then think, whatever I'm selling, you just bought. <laughs> Jillian, would you like to come help me? Jillian and I will be doing a quick little three to four minute role play. It's totally unrehearsed. In fact, she didn't even know until this morning. <laughs> come on up, Jillian. Good to see you. You too. So I know last year you were working at Parsley Mount Resort, weren't you? I was. And what was it you were doing? A lot of things. A lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Such um, as? Teaching skiing and, and working in events. In events. Yeah. And I know you're making a job shift now. Yeah. And what does that include? Um, more into the kind of health and wellness. Health and wellness. That's what I'm passionate about. Are you working with someone else or developing your own business? Or you I'm starting to develop my own business, but also working with the team. Working with the team. Yeah. But what kind of team? <laughs> uh, kind of a, a team of. Um, well, industry leaders really are kind of spread out across the U.S., so I'm a little bit isolated here um, in Utah, where a lot of my uh, team is, we do a lot of internet, um, internet. connecting. And so, so, you're, so how do you connect with them? Are you uh, a lot on Facebook? A lot on Facebook? Yeah, yeah okay. I found that to be a really, really helpful tool. Now, how do you like Facebook? Because I know that they're always changing. They've always got new things coming out. I don't think I've noticed change at all on Facebook for all the years. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, Not really. So how is that level? <laughs> <laughs> Are you using Facebook to I, I use LinkedIn a little bit. That's a little more challenging for me because I never know what to write. It's all oh. that can be critiqued on LinkedIn. Well, LinkedIn can be a little challenging too, and yeah. then knowing that you're putting yourself out there in front of all these other professionals, but it's a great tool right. to make those connections. So, um, I don't know if you're aware, but the Compass is, has come out, and there's some classes coming up this fall. Oh, what is, what is the Compass? The Compass. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, I don't know if you've seen this, but they have these out in front of like the coffee shops, or uh, this one I actually get in the mail, but it's, the, it's a directory of community education classes that's offered through the Park City School District Community Education. And the, I'm actually teaching some classes as well, if it might help you. The timing sounds like it might be good yeah. if you're starting out. What are you teaching? We're teaching, I'm teaching LinkedIn, I'm mm -hmm. teaching Facebook for business pages, and I'm also teaching Twitter. Wow. And it's, it's a very... You don't do Twitter. You don't do Twitter. <laughs> you know, some people love it, some people hate it. It's interesting, but I found in marketing you really need to, you really need to hit huh. all out of huh. at some point when you're comfortable. Yeah. I'm also doing one-on-ones through the compass oh, too, which is okay. kind of nice because then you don't have to sit in a classroom with other people that are either further ahead in their knowledge or yeah. side or less or behind. But you know, if you're interested, I can put you in touch with Jane Totally, who's taking reservations for the classes. We, they're from 5:30 to 8:30, and the dates are in here. But it might help you with your connecting and also research because you know, with Facebook, it's great for researching what other professionals like you would do. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Because I said, great. Well, really you know great. what? I'm going to give this to you because I've got a couple more copies. And let me show you. All you have to do is you can just 
you can email Jane here and just or give her a phone call. Okay. It's really, really nice. And then uh, let her know you want to sign up. And then we'll see you in one Awesome. Call. So just call that and I can call that. Jane. Exactly. Tell I, I, I would love. love to check it out. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> you too. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Much. You're welcome. <laughs> Sold American. <laughs> Do you, does anyone have any questions or comments or other wisdom that they can impart? Julio. Do you have her phone number or her email address to follow up? Because I she used to delete this paper. You are very, very correct with that. And that is part of the credibility that you need to develop with your buyer following up. If you promise to give them information, Send them the information quickly. Follow up. Hey, did you get a chance to talk to Jane yet? Do you have any questions? You don't want to be overbearing, but that's a very good point, Julio. Thank you. And I had a question about asking right up front what, or, or making it, um, making the other person aware up front that you have something that you're selling. Because that, there seemed to be a little discomfort, like, okay, you know, why are you asking all these questions? without establishing a reason for asking all those questions. I, I appreciate that question and my comment, my response to that is that we have three to four minutes. <laughs> when I first wrote my speech, it was eight minutes long. How can I teach someone to sell something in, in four minutes? But you're right, you want to develop that rapport. Many times when this happens, you're in a conversation with someone, whether in my case, it would be more social, I would be out at a chamber of commerce meeting or I'd be at a coffee shop. But you may be in your, your business, you may be in, in your storefront, or you may be at a trade show. So the fact that that person's already there shows that there is some sort of interest, some sort of intrigue, some sort of possible confusion. They just may be looking around thinking, hmm. Hmm. And then that's the way you can start the question. So, you know what, Toastmasters? Have you heard of Toastmasters? So, but four to four to minute, four minutes is a challenge. Mark, did you know that? Uh, what about a, a bolder promise or a bolder question right up front? Because when you were talking to her about her business, I didn't get from you like, okay, got your teaching classes, but what specifically, what specific benefit would she receive from going to class? So how would you like to double your Facebook impressions or triple your LinkedIn profile or something, something that's a little more specific that relate. I mean, in business, people get hammered with stuff all the time. So it's really a question mm -hmm. about what's, what distinguishes you in your particular class or coaching, whatever you're going to do, versus the five million other people out there doing social media stuff. Well, that's that's another good point. That's where you have to know your market. That's where you have to know your competitors. And we, when you have time, then you can get into those details. You can talk to them about why you should be working. What this is what I do with my clients. But one of my taglines is. I can do what I can do, what you need to do, but you don't have time to do because you need to run your business. So let me run your social media. We are out of time, speaking of time, but thank you very much. Go sell something.